The Cross Product, Level 9. In this final video on the Cross Product series, we will go over various torque examples. Let's jump straight into the first example. A vertical force of 50 pounds is applied to the end of a 2 foot lever that is attached to an axle at point P and located on the YZ plane. Find the moment of this force about point P when theta equals 60 degrees. In this problem, we are asked to find the moment of the force F about point P when theta equals 60 degrees. Recall that moments and torques represent the same quantity. We can find the moment or torque in two distinct ways. We can use the component definition or the geometric definition of the cross product. Since the torque is defined as the cross product between the position vector r and the force vector f, let's go ahead and solve this problem by using the component definition. In order to use the component definition of the cross product, we need to find the components of the position vector r and the components of the force vector f. Since the force is directed vertically downward, the force vector will only have a z component of negative 50 pounds. The other components will be equal to zero. For the position vector, we can find the y and z components by using right triangle trigonometry. Notice that the position vector is located in the yz plane, so it will have a y component equal to 2 times cosine of 60 degrees, which is equal to 1. And the z component will be equal to 2 times sine of 60 degrees, which is equal to the square root of 3. Now that we have the components of both the position and force vector, let's go ahead and find the moment or torque about point P. We start by setting up our determinant as follows. Next, we go ahead and find the minors of the matrix. From here, it is just a matter of computing the determinant of each 2 by 2 matrix. Doing that, we obtain the following components for the moment. So the torque vector will point in the negative x direction and will have a magnitude equal to 50 foot pounds. Note that the moment is dependent on the angle formed by the lever and the positive y axis. When theta equals pi over 2 and the force stays constant, the moment is equal to zero, since the force will be pointing in the same direction as the position vector. The moment is greatest when the angle is equal to zero degrees. In this configuration, the position vector and force vector will be orthogonal to one another. All right, let's try the next example. Find the magnitude and direction of the torque about point P if a 36 pound force is applied as shown. All right, here we have a rigid body in the shape of an L and a force of 36 pounds is applied at an angle of depression of 30 degrees at one end. We need to find the magnitude and direction of the torque. Notice that in this problem, the rigid body and the force vector F are all located in the same plane. So the torque vector is going to be orthogonal to this plane. It will either point into the page or out of the page. We need to use the definition of torque in order to find both the magnitude and direction. Once again, we have two distinct ways to solve this problem. We can go ahead and find the components of the position vector r and the components of the force vector f and use the component definition of the cross product by setting up a determinant. Or we can use the geometric definition and find the magnitude of the position vector r and force vector f and multiply these values by sine of the angle between these two vectors. Let's solve this problem by using the geometric definition. Let's first find the magnitude of the position vector. The position vector will start at point P 
and end at the point where the force is being applied. Since we are given the dimensions of the part, we can easily find the magnitude by using the Pythagorean theorem, since we have a 45-45-90 right triangle. Simplifying the expression, we obtain the following value for the magnitude of the position vector r. The magnitude of the force vector f was given to us, and it was equal to 36 pounds. All we need now is the angle between the position vector r and the force vector f. We can use basic geometry to find this angle, or if you decide to solve this problem by using the component definition of the cross product, you can use the dot product to find the angle between the position and force vector. Let's move the position vector forward so that its tail matches the tail of the force vector. Notice that we have vertical angles and complementary angles. By using geometry, the angle between the position vector and the force vector is going to be equal to 45 plus 60 degrees. So the angle between both vectors is 105 degrees. Next, it is just a matter of substituting all these values into the geometric definition of the cross product. Doing that and approximating the value, we obtain 197 foot pound for the magnitude of the torque. The direction of the torque can be determined by using the right hand rule. The applied force will cause the shape to rotate clockwise, so the torque vector will be pointing into the board. So we use an X to show the direction of the torque vector. All right, let's go over the final example. The specifications for a tractor state that the torque on a bolt with head size 7 8 inches cannot exceed 200 foot pounds. Determine the maximum force that can be applied to the wrench in the figure. All right, similar to the previous example, let's use the definition of torque and use it to find the maximum force one can apply to the bolt. Since we are given the magnitude of the position vector and we are also provided with various angles, we're going to use the geometric definition of the cross product to solve this problem. You're free to use the component definition as well. You just need to find an expression for the components of the position and force vector. This will require a little more work. Nevertheless, it is an acceptable way of solving the problem. All right. Notice that we are given the magnitude of the position vector and the magnitude of the torque. We are also given two separate angles. Notice that the 50 degree angle is irrelevant to the calculation of torque, since we are interested on the angle formed between the position and force vectors. In this case, the angle we need can be found by subtracting 70 degrees from 180 degrees. Now that we have our angle, let's go ahead and substitute these expressions into the geometric definition of the cross product. At this point, it is just a matter of solving for the magnitude of the force vector f. Doing that and approximating our answer, we obtain 106.4 pounds as the final answer. All right. And this ends the cross product video series. In our next series of videos, we will learn how to write and generate the equation of lines and planes.